Hey, I'm Stefan with Papadakis Racing. We're here at a race shop in Carson, California, where I'm gonna take you guys through the entire process of building a handbrake out of aluminum. We are going to start by a sketch, then CAD design it in SolidWorks, 3D print it out of plastic and make sure that it's exactly what we wanna make. And then we're gonna program the CNC behind me and actually cut it out of a piece of aluminum and make a full on billet handbrake. Let's get started. So the handbrake is the part of the drift car that when you pull it, it locks up the rear brakes. The handle is usually made out of aluminum. We already run these in a bunch of the drift cars. I thought it'd be neat to make something for this video. And before I started, I did go do some Google searching from some different handbrakes, get inspired a little bit. I really didn't see anything that I liked that much better than what we already make. So I figured let's not change up our normal design too much, but I do wanna run you guys through the whole process of this. So if I have a project I wanna do, I'm gonna start with pencil to paper. What am I going to eventually build? And we know we wanna build a handbrake. I'm gonna outline the general shape of it. If there's some critical dimensions, for us, it's the overall length of the handbrake. It's gonna be the center bore for where the bearing goes, some offsets for where the brake master cylinder linkage hooks up. And other than that, we can do the rest in SolidWorks. Once I got the basic sketch of what I wanted to build worked out, I moved into SolidWorks to actually do the, the computer design. I'm actually using exactly the same software that you can get, 3D Experience SolidWorks for makers. They have an amazing deal right now. It's like 20% off if you use the link that I have in the description down below. Basically $79 a year. And this version of SolidWorks also comes with X Design, X Shape, and it also includes NC Shop Floor Programmer, which is from Delmia. And we're gonna use that in the second video when we go program the CNC. So the first step in designing this CAD part is starting a new file. I'm gonna do a part file. You have a few different planes that you can start on. I usually like the front plane if I'm gonna machine it. You really need a basic understanding of general high school geometry to get through SolidWorks and CAD design stuff. So that would say that's a minimum here. So the center of the screen is called the origin. We're gonna put our first circle there, which is gonna be our pivot point. And then I'm gonna put another circle, which will be the hole where the master cylinder linkage hooks up to. I already know the dimensions of this. We want a half inch hole for the pivot and a quarter inch hole for the linkage. A Couple more dimensions we're gonna pin in for the offsets. And then I'm gonna draw a line for the center line of where the handbrake handle goes. You'll see a couple different line styles here. Ones that are bold lines with no dashes in it, that's actually part of the part. We're gonna make the part from those lines. And if you see something dashed, those are like construction lines. So we're using them for reference. Let's start building the profile. So I'm gonna pick uh, the line tool. And up in the top here, we have all of our different tools. Think of all the, the tools on the top of as, as actually tools, right? So we have a tool to make lines, a tool to make circles, a tool to make different shapes. And we also have a tool to dimension things. So I'm going to make the profile of the handbrake just sort of rough here, right? So I've got a couple of angled lines and a couple of straight parallel lines that are come up. I haven't put any lengths or any relations. They're just sort of a, a basic outline. I know that I want the lower diameter a little over an inch. So we're going to go ahead and put a dimension there. These two points where the angles start, I want to line them up. And so I'm gonna do a construction line across them and make that line horizontal. And then I wanna center that line on the center line that I made for the handbrake. So you can actually choose a point in the center of that line and then make that coincident with the uh, vertical line that I'm considering the center of the handbrake handle. So once that's done, uh, we've gotta figure out a width. Right now that still can be moved around. So I'm gonna get the smart dimension tool and put our inch and a half width that we want. And you'll see the lines start changing from blue to black. Once they're black, they're defined, which means that they're not gonna move around if we try to drag it. On the bottom of this, I'm gonna use a three point arc because I don't need a full circle. So now I've got these two lines that represent the outside profile of the handbrake handle. And we wanna bring them up to uh, the top of, of the handle. I don't want it let's just straight across. I actually want a nice little arc on the top of it. So what I'll do is make a circle. I'll lock the top of that circle onto the top of the construction line that I made in order to have the overall length exactly what we dimensioned. And look, with all of the stuff that I'm doing here and within SolidWorks and these different CAD programs, there's several ways that you can build this. So be open-minded to other ways of doing it. This is just the way that's worked well and efficiently for me. I'm gonna go ahead and get this little scissor trim tool 
and I'm going to cut off the parts of the circle that I don't need. And I end up with this nice arc at the top. The way I've designed this now is I can change the diameter of that circle, which changes the radius of that top arc. I can just play with that a little bit until I'm happy with the shape that I have. Now I've designed the top of it. At this point, we've got an entire profile. It's an entire closed loop. So down at the bottom, the sides, and our top arc there. But it's got zero thickness. It's just a sketch. In order to turn this into a 3D object, we want to do the extruded boss. So we're basically taking the profile of the sketch we just made, expanding it into the third dimension. And within this feature, we can say how thick we want it and which direction. What I found the best way in, in parts like this, I'm actually going to go both directions, the total thickness. So once I get that turned into a 3D part, now we got something. You can start seeing, oh, we got a handbrake started here. In case you're interested in my computer workstation, I'm using the MSI Creator Pro Z16P. This is my second MSI laptop. I've had the other one for five or six years. One of the things that I really like about this laptop, it has a powerful GPU graphics card. It's the NVIDIA's RTX A5500. That one's certified for SolidWorks. And when you're doing 3D stuff, a powerful graphics card can help some of the speed. The monitor I'm using is a 27 inch QHD IPS panel. While it's not Necessarily to have a computer this powerful, I'm a big fan of modern tech and, you know, love the latest and greatest. I'll link to both of these in the video's description down below. The next step is to start turning into something usable, the rest of the features that we need here. So I'm going to make another sketch again on that main front plane. This sketch profile is going to be essentially the, the shape that I want to remove. So I'm going to make a circle, a couple of lines that are tangent to that circle. And then I'm going to follow the profile of the handbrake that we already extruded, add a couple more relations here. Let's do a horizontal center line, just a, like a reference construction line, and then define an angle between this top line and our uh, horizontal line. So I'll set that to 30 degrees and another smart dimension from, again, our horizontal line to this lower line as well. We'll make that 10 degrees. So again, I'm going to get the trim tool and then cut away the parts that we don't need. The tool we're gonna to use now is an extruded cut. So it basically works the same way. We take a shape and this time, because we're gonna cut, we're gonna remove material within the profile that we just created. So I'll use the mirror feature, then choose that cut that we just made and mirror it along the center line of the part, which is our front plane. So I'll go ahead and do another sketch on the front plane, I'll dimension the diameter for the size of the bearing that we're gonna put in, which is 7 eighths of an inch, 0.875, and go through the same process of extrude, cut it, and then I'll mirror it to the other side. Now it's time to add some style and let's get some weight out of this thing. So I'm gonna start by just creating a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, and a center line down the center point of the handbrake. And I'm gonna take the center of the rectangle's top line and center that, make it coincident, on the center line of the handbrake. And then we're gonna start adding some dimensions here. So now we've got our rectangle locked in from both sides and the top and the bottom. The next would be to extruded cut and remove some material. And I'm gonna go through the same process as I did with the other extruded cuts. I'm gonna offset it by an eighth of an inch. And then again, I'll go through and mirror that to the other side. So we're starting to make some progress, starting to look like a handbrake. Let's get a logo on here. I'm gonna open up this thing's called Blocks. Blocks are a little more of an advanced feature, but basically I've made my logo in a different uh, sketch before, and I saved it as a block. I'm taking this outline of the Papadakis Racing logo, and I'm putting it into this new sketch. I'll define it a little bit with some dimensions from the top and the sides, that way we're nice and centered. What we're gonna do is we're gonna extrude cut this, but only a little bit. You'll see why later. After we anodize this part, we're gonna put it back in the machine and machine away the anodized part. And we'll have a cool looking machined Papadakis Racing logo with the rest of the handbrake anodized. For the other side, when I do the logo, I actually can't do the mirror this time because if I mirror image, the logo is gonna be backwards. So I'm just gonna go through the same process of bringing the block into a new sketch and extrude cutting it the same way to the other side with the 30,000s extruded cut. Once the logo is put on both sides, we can start putting a little bit more style in this thing and making it a little bit lighter as well. So I'm gonna do a sketch right on the handbrake surface here and figure out kind of what shape I want here. And I wanna do something that's neat looking, but at the same point, like relatively easy to machine. 
So we can do circles, triangles, you know, whatever shape. After playing around a little bit, I decided to go with the hexagon shape. I haven't seen any handbrakes with this shape yet, so I figured it would have some originality to it. So we go ahead and pick the polygon shape and six-sided, which is a hexagon, and then start dimensioning it. So make the top line horizontal, bring the center point of the hexagon with a center line that I'm going to put on the handbrake. Instead of making the total dimension of the hexagon, I decided to have a distance between the hexagon and the logo and the hexagon corner and the inside of the rectangle extruded cut that we made. That way, if we ever change the dimension of the handbrake, the scale of the hexagon will change with it. We'll go ahead and extruded cut all the way through the handbrake, and now we have our feature. After looking at it, I decided that I want a little bit more space between the logo and the hexagon, so I went back into the sketch and just increased that dimension. And that's what's great about CAD designing is if you set it up right, and you want to make a change, it's usually pretty quick. So we will eventually have to machine this with a round tool. So we can't have these sharp edges inside any of these profiles or any of these features. So we're going to use the fillets tool. And I know we're going to use a quarter inch diameter cutter. And I'm going to go a little bit larger than that on its radius. So the radius of a quarter inch cutter is 0.125. I'm going to go 0 0.130. That way we don't dig the whole cutter into the corner of this when it's cutting. You'll understand a little bit more of this when we get into the machining part of it. So I'll add the fillets to all six corners of our hexagon. And I think we're looking pretty good. We're starting to get some style out of this. But we only have one, right? So if we want to have several of these hexagons all the way down our handbrake, we could do it several ways. One of them is to make a bunch of hexagons in a sketch, put all those fillets and do all of that several times. Or there's a tool called the linear pattern. I already know I want the dimensions of all of our hexagons and fillets the same. And I'm just going to type in how many hexagons we want and the spacing between each one of them. And you can choose the feature that extruded cut and just duplicate it in a linear pattern. And just by playing around a little bit with the dimensions until I was happy with the way it looks, relatively centered in the rectangular extruded cut that we made, I hit OK and it duplicates that feature several times. And I wasn't quite happy with the spacing in the bottom, so I went back into that linear pattern, changed the dimensions slightly, and then now I feel like it, it looks like it's spaced pretty darn well. And let's do some little housekeeping here to make sure that we can finally machine this. Uh, again, we've got some sharp edges on the inside of our rectangle, so we're going to add some fillets there. We're going to make sure they're slightly larger than the tool that we're going to cut that part out with. Same thing with the Papadakis logo. The round tool needs to get in there. Even though the tool we're going to use is super, super small, uh, it can't make a right angle corner. So I'm going to put some fillets in there with a slightly larger radius uh, than the tool that we're going to use. A few more little fillets here. We're going to do one inside our rectangle. And instead of having a sharp edge there, I like to have a little bit of a fillet. And a 20 thousandths fillet is the corner radius of the tool I plan to use there. So I can go ahead and add that feature. And then instead of having sharp edges around the outside of our rectangle and the whole profile of the handbrake, we can add some chamfers there. So instead of it being rounded, these are going to have a 45 degree angle. And I have a special tool that we're going to use later when we manufacture it that can create that shape. We can also change the appearance of our handbrake. And there's a lot of powerful tools here. Let's just use some basic ones where we make the handbrake red and then the parts that we're going to machine after that will eventually be that aluminum color. I can make those like a silver gray color. The next step is let's get this thing printed in the 3D printer. The problem with this is the handbrake is actually larger than the platform of the 3D printer. We can't print the whole thing. It just sticks out. So we're going to cut it into two pieces and we're going to bond it back together after we print it. So I'm just going to make a sketch. It's not super important where you do it on something like this. That's mock-up. So I'm going to have an angle here near the middle of the part. Basically remove and cut half of the part off. Save that as an STL format because that's what most printers use, 3D printers. I will then bring that top part back, then extrude cut the bottom part, and then save uh, the top part of something. So we will then have two STL files, a top and a bottom. We can then bring those two parts into the 3D printer software. And now we have the whole part fitting inside our 3D printer. 
So the material we're going to use is PLA. It's relatively stiff. It prints really easily. It's not good at high temps, but for prototyping what we're doing, it's what I found to be the easiest to print and the most reliable. It's also a relatively inexpensive filament. If you make a mistake or want to build a few of these, it's pretty inexpensive. There is a tricky part about printing something like this. And if you look at it from underneath at the right angle, you'll see that part of the handbrake isn't touching the build plate. So you need to add support. And what support means is the 3D printer can't print in air, right? It has to print on something. So this void underneath the handbrake in the center of our rectangle needs to have something that it can build on. So the support is a 3D printed sacrificial layer that's relatively easy to remove, that it's gonna print as well, but with a very low density. And that allows us to print basically a bridge by adding this support underneath. If I click the layers section here, you can get an idea of what we're actually gonna print. So each time the 3D printer passes by, it adds another layer on top of each other. And the material comes out relatively hot. So it melts the first layer to the build plate. The second layer touches the first layer, and then it melts to the, that first layer. And you keep building up layer by layer by layer until you have got the entire part. So the print took about 11 hours. So I set it before I went home for the night. When I came in the morning, it was sitting there ready to go in the printer. Pulled it out and everything looked like it was a success. Next step was to turn it into the full part again. So the first step was to remove all of the support material. And again, it's a very low density and it doesn't stick very well to the actual part. So just with my fingers, I was able to pull all of that support away. It's not as pretty the finish on the side that has the support as the top side, but for something like this, where we're just doing a mock-up, it's totally fine. What I use to bond the part together is just JB Weld. Two-part epoxy, mix it together, put it on both surfaces, and stick the part together. Overnight it dried, and in the next morning, we had a complete handbrake. So before we go and actually manufacture this, I wanna make sure that it's exactly what we wanna make. That's the whole point of this 3D printed part. So I pressed in the bearings into the handbrake and installed it into one of the drift cars that we have here that has a similar dimension handbrake. Everything worked fine. So now that we have our completed prototype handbrake, in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys the process of programming the CNC, the tooling, and actually making this out of aluminum so we can have a usable handbrake. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to be notified when the second part of the handbrake video comes out, when we machine it, uh, be sure to subscribe. Once that video is out, I will put a link to that video in the description down below. Thanks for watching.